My name is Ed Boyden, and I'm an associate professor here at the MIT Media Lab and the MIT McGovern Institute. So our lab is a neuroengineering group. We try to develop new technologies that allow us to understand, analyze, control, and engineer brain circuits. The hope is that just as computer science allows us to understand the computer circuits and build them, we like to be able to understand the brain and repair it. The brain, unlike a laptop or a computer that you might have at home, is made out of many different kinds of element called neuron, the cells that make up the brain. And they're very heterogeneous. They come in many different kinds. To put it into perspective, within a cubic millimeter of brain tissue, there's a million neurons, and they probably come in hundreds of different kinds. Ideally, what we should be able to do is be able to turn each of these different kinds of neuron on or off to see what role they play in the circuit in which they're embedded. In that way, you can figure out how do these neurons work together, which ones are important at a given time, which neurons, if you activate them or shut them down, can help repair the brain. Over the last uh, few years, we developed a technology a tool set called optogenetics, which is basically a set of molecules that you can put into neurons that allow you to turn on or off the electrical activity of those neurons using pulses of light. Neurons are electrical devices. They compute using electricity. So we need to be able to basically create electricity at a distance. One way to do it is to install in these neurons, just the neurons that you care about, molecules that act like solar cells. They convert light into electricity. So where do we find molecules that can convert light into electrical energy? Well, there's a species of green algae that lives in bodies of water and has to navigate towards the top of the water in order to photosynthesize optimally. It does this by sensing light using a small organelle in it called an eye spot. If you zoom in on it, you can actually find in the membrane of this eye spot little light-sensitive proteins that convert light into electrical energy. When light hits those molecules, in this case blue light, these molecules called chenorhodopsins actually open up a tiny pore and let charged particles or ions from one side of the eye spot to the other. Sort of like, you know, a solar cell charging up a battery. And so we can take the little piece of DNA that encodes for this chenorhodopsin install it in a neuron. We can use gene therapy vectors, such as the kind that are already being used in human clinical trials. Once this gene therapy vector has delivered the DNA into the neuron, the neuron will then take that piece of DNA and manufacture the chenorhodopsin proteins and install them all over the neural membrane. Now when light hits that neuron, the chenorhodopsin proteins will convert the light into electricity, the neuron will fire an electrical pulse, and that will allow us to drive neural activity using light. Now, how do we get light into the brain? We do that by using uh, optical fibers to beam light into the brain. We can then pulse these lasers on and off very rapidly so we can drive neurons within specific regions. Brain circuits, of course, are not single points, but they are three-dimensional objects, some of them very densely wired, widely distributed throughout the, the entire structure. And so what we need are technologies for controlling entire neural circuits. One of the things that we're doing now is to try and actually build three-dimensional light delivery devices that can beam light into many parts of a neural circuit. So what we have here is an array of optical elements, optical fibers coupled to individual light sources that can turn on and off, as you can see by the blinking here, about 16 different points within the brain. And so that allows us to do things like delete an entire circuit associated with memory just for a millisecond. Or we can drive complex patterns of activity, getting information into the brain. One of the really important things that we're trying to do is to reach out to people and to distribute these tools to people who can apply them to different problems from chronic pain to epilepsy to blindness. And that means we have to be able to speak both the languages of biology and medicine, and also for physics and engineering, and to bridge those gaps. Our hopes going forward is that we can continue to deliver tools that allow people not only to understand and engineer the brain for revealing the principles of operation of the brain, but also to help fix the brain directly. And of course, with brain disorders being a huge unmet medical need, um, this is of course uh, something that we want to really help focus on in the years to come.